Mus Fertile at lesrib.com here, reporting from Mother's Mosquito Cage in Harakopio, Greece. Now the summer temperatures here in Greece make it very difficult to do much physical work in the workshop, so today we thought we'd show you how to make a solar oven using items that you'll find in the house, such as a couple of cardboard boxes, shredded paper which will be for the insulation, tape, glue and aluminium foil. Just one thing, before you forge ahead and start making your solar oven, it's important to make sure that the cooking pot that you'll be using actually fits inside the inner box, like so. Uh, it's a very simple construction, basically it's a box within a box. So first of all you start off with the larger box, this is the one we're going to be using, but as you can see, it's got holes in it, which we'll be covering. After we've done that, we put the insulation in, and then the interior box. The interior box is then covered on the inside with an aluminium foil, and then we will form a lid. Okay, so as you can see here, what we've done is cut out some cardboard to line the bottom of the box and then two extra pieces to cover the holes at the sides which we've glued in. Now the next stage is to add the insulation which is in the form of shredded paper. You need to put about five centimetres in the base of your box. One important thing to note is once you've done that, put your inner box inside and press it down because you need to make sure that both boxes are the same height. If they're not the same height and you need to cut some off, then mark it at this time and cut it off. So once you've cut your box, your inner box down to size, the next stage before you fill this gap in with insulation is to fill the interior of the box with silver foil. You do this very simply by just gluing the inside of the box and sticking the silver foil to it shiny side out, of course. I found it best to um, do the base of the box first when you're sticking your foil on. So get your glue. We're using wood glue here. Um, but I suppose a craft glue would work just as well. Then get your piece of foil and press it down hard into the corners as well um, until you think you've got a good fit doesn't matter too much because you can always overlap foil afterwards. Okay, so we've now lined the inner box with aluminium foil. We do this so that the maximum amount of sun rays is reflected onto the cooking pot. The next stage is to put it inside the outer box and then fill the cavity all the way around with more shredded paper which actually provides the insulation to keep the heat inside. Don't worry if you don't have shredded paper, torn up newspaper would work just as well, just make sure you pack plenty in. Right okay, as you can see we've filled the sides with the shredded paper for insulation but we need to make sure that any heat in here doesn't escape as much as possible. So what we've done now is just cut some more cardboard and what we'll do is place it over the edge like this to close this gap and then we'll just tape it and glue it onto the box. What would we do without duct tape? The next job is to make the lid which we're also going to make out of cardboard. Here you can see where we've drawn out the lines of where we're going to cut. Having cut out the opening in the lid, we then stapled some polythene to it and covered over the staples with more tape. Okay, so we've finished our solar oven. As you can see here, we've finished the lid, put some plastic in the middle and taped it. And then when you put it on, it's a nice snug fit, which is what you want, obviously, to keep as much heat in as possible. Um, we're going to test it later, so I'm going to put a temperature probe in just to see what temperatures we do get up to. This is the bigger one that we built. We built this about four years ago, and it's the second one we made, actually, so we did slightly modify it. 
as you can see on this one the front of it is angled to get the maximum amount of sunlight in there um, so when we've tested this if we don't find it comes to a high enough temperature we can always make either a parabola or something or some reflector to get as maximum amount of sunshine in there we tested the oven the next day, uh, we recorded a temperature of almost 90 degrees centigrade, which was great. So if this project of ours has inspired you, then why not have a go at making a simple, cheap and efficient way of harnessing the power of the sun.